Hey, everybody. Uh, we're back again watching a good video. And thank you for joining me. Uh, and I'm hoping this is helpful. If so, please let me know, like, share, subscribe, uh, so that we can fill YouTube with a bunch of stuff to help us thrive and to move into more transparency. And so that's kind of what we're talking about today with narcissism. And when you've been in the field as long as I have, this is relatively new to understand the types of narcissism. What I mean particularly though is vulnerable. That, that's relatively new that we've got these two types and vulnerable is a little complicated. So I just wanted to go over uh, some of the characteristics. Now, grandiose, we kind of know this, okay? I'm not gonna explain all that, but we kind of know this. It's kind of boisterous, you know, I'm, uh, there's just this understanding that I'm, I'm better than the rest of the folks. I deserve more. I can take what I want without uh, consequences and so forth. Uh, and and we, I think we've had a good feel for that piece of narcissism of what that is and what it looks like and how it presents and can be very damaging, uh, you know, to a lot of people. Now, vulnerable narcissism is the one that is, is a little more recent. And so there's a lot of these, if we were to have individual tests to measure each one of these, there would be a lot of overlap in, in the different categories that I've written down. But I think one of the main things to look at is these folks deep down don't feel good about themselves, okay? There's, a, um, there's an instability with who they are and how they relate to the world. And, um, you know, this just uh, fragile ego is that they don't, it, it's very easy to uh, throw them off kilter and to make them feel, perceive, uh, that they perceive themselves as inadequate. But that's not gonna show up uh, that way. They will present as having it together and not wanting to ever present as being inadequate. So it's like a huge fear that they could be seen as less than. And so we've got these three kind of run together, unstable emotions, uh, fragile ego, just insecure about themselves, although they may not recognize this. What this might look like, um, they're hypersensitive when they're around people that they perceive are smarter or better looking or more fit than they are, more attractive. They're going to be hypersensitive to this. They may not be very aware of this cognitively, okay, but it's going to cause reactions. And so remember, though, we're still talking about narcissism, okay? So we could have all of these and be really depressed, potentially, or... Um, not wanting to interact and not feel very good about ourselves, not attain much, you know, uh, academically and so forth. But there's an entitlement. This is a key one that I would probably need to circle is that when things do come their way or they feel like they deserve that, okay? So these people could be easily um, swayed by somebody who shows a, uh, uh, that uh, attraction to them. Uh, they feel so bad about themselves that just the slightest hint that somebody may be attractive and they could act on this. Um, again, the feeling inferior kind of matches up here, a lot of overlap. Shame prone uh, that, you know, when there is an action that uh, they don't consider in their highest ideal, they feel very shameful about that. And it may not be something that they cognitively recognize, okay? This could be really suppressed. Uh, and um, then that, that can lead to becoming very defensive. So instead of owning the fact that they don't feel good about themselves, they can become very defensive about it. And this can come out in um, verbal abuse, perhaps even physical abuse or threats of physical abuse. This can also come out in playing the victim, okay? Uh, that playing the victim gets people to feel sorry for them so that they don't have to own mistakes. Uh, they can be very envious uh, of folks that they perceive as having, again, you know, maybe being more attractive or uh, smarter or fit or whatever it may be. Now, this is interesting. I'll be talking a lot more about narcissism. Um, let me just give you an example here, okay, with this. So they, they feel inadequate and they feel inferior um, and so let's say here then that somebody shows attraction, whether they're married or not, somebody shows attraction and they, they immediately jump for that, okay? So they immediately jump for it to whether it's a, a fling or an affair or what have you. And then when uh, confronted with it, they'll deny it. 
it was almost kind of like, hey, I deserve this. And they'll uh, kind of uh, figure out ways to make the other, other person at fault. They'll find ways to persecute. So this is, if you look at my videos on Cartman Drama Triangle, I think you see a lot of this within the vulnerable narcissism subtype here. Um, but interesting, in a study I recently read, and so for those of you, I teach tests and measurements, so this might be helpful also, but uh, let's see, I believe this was Maleza and Cosmeric, uh, 2018, related to grandiose and vulnerable narcissism. Um, they used two measures to measure the two different types, and they got a correlation coefficient of 0.22, okay? So it's positive. It's in the direction we would expect, you know, it's, uh, it's going in this direction. Let's say grandiose is here and vulnerable is here. We had somebody that scored lower here, we would expect lower on uh, grandiose. And if we had somebody score higher on vulnerable, we would expect higher on grandiose. So it's positive, but it's a small correlation. Um, so if we were to take that and we wanted to get a coefficient of determination, we square it. And we get point, uh, 0.048, which if we, to get a percentage out of that, we multiply by 100 and we get roughly 5%, okay? And so interestingly, when we're looking at the overlap with the coefficient of determination, we can talk about percent of shared variance. We're looking that it's a really, that's what this indicates here, is that it's a really about this, this little piss piece right here, sorry, is 5% shared variance between grandiose and vulnerable narcissism. Meaning if we were to have, uh, if we were to be able to measure somebody's level of grandiose narcissism, we would have 5% of the information needed to predict vulnerable narcissism. So there's a lot more going on here with vulnerable narcissism here that uh, we would need to measure um, and really get to maybe this insecurity and the enviousness and the shame proneness. So some other measures to really be able to measure this well. All right, so this is just an introduction into something that I think every counselor needs to be aware of. Um, you're, you, I wouldn't think that you are not likely to be working with a high percentage of people with narcissism, either vulnerable or grandiose but you are gonna be working with victims of both of these. And this one's gonna be tricky, okay? Because it can easily shift and play the victim. Again, go back and look at Cartman Drama Triangle. They can play that. And you need to know what this looks like in order to provide good counseling. All right, thank you for, uh, for, for tuning in. And please let me know your comments. If this was helpful, subscribe. And there will be more that we will talk about with uh, narcissism. Take good care.